So in Romans chapters one through three, Paul is laying out his argument with the religious leaders about faith versus works for salvation. Today in chapter four, he's gonna lay out his exhibit A, Abraham, to prove his evidence. Hey, welcome back to our channel, Christ Be Known. I'm Teddy Stewart. I'm Ron Stewart. Hey, here on this channel, we're gonna be putting out videos on a weekly basis, uh, talking about God's Word. Uh, we're gonna um, unpack the scriptures and try to gain a better understanding of, of the Lord um, and try to get to know the Lord more. Amen. A little bit about us if you're new to our channel. Uh, we're not experts in the Word of God, but we do love to read the Word of God. We love to study about God. Uh, we want to get to know him more so that we can go for him more. Please leave us comments, questions um, about, you know, about the study, about a previous study, uh, anything that you, you know, want to comment about or, or just ask us about. We're more than happy to get your answers or just to have a conversation in the comments with you. Yes. Um, also, if, if you would like to use the same study journal that we use when we're doing our weekly studies, um, it'll be linked in the description box below. All right. Well, with that, let's say a prayer and get into this. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have to gather today. Father, we thank you for all the eyeballs that are viewing this and going to be watching yes. it. Uh, we yes, thank you for any and all comments and questions that we get. Lord, we just ask that you use us as vessels. Speak through us. Help us to learn what your word is saying so that we can share that with others. And Father, we just pray that seeds are planted, seeds are watered, and that there's a harvest that takes place. Yes. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, if you've been following along, we're, you know we're in Romans chapter 4. If you haven't, well, we're in Romans chapter 4. Uh, and so... Romans chapter 4 is really cool. Um, I like it. It's... Paul is basically proving what he's been talking about in chapters one, two, and three. Yep. Here in chapter four. Yep. He's giving you the, he's giving you the facts. Now he's giving you the proof, the evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and we finished off chapter three. I think it's kind of important that we go back. But you know, he was talking about that. You know, there, that man is justified by faith, not by works, because mm -hmm. otherwise, man has something to boast about. Right. And he says, okay, so. If we don't need to keep the law to be justified, mm -hmm. is the law just void? Yep. No, it's not. Because we are justified by our faith from God's, God's grace, the law is there. We establish the law. Mm -hmm. The law it gives us knowledge of sin. Yep. Okay. So now, now that he basically made those points, now he's going to give us the... Uh, evidence of why that why it's true, and he starts off talking about Abraham, and uh, well, as become of custom, <clears throat> I didn't plan on doing this in the beginning, but I'm just going to blip through the first eight verses. Okay. So it says, "What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, then he has something to boast about." but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. So good. Yes, it is. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, God, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Here he's quoting David. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Hallelujah. Oh, um, where to start? Well, I have to start here first. Let's we may back up. 
Verse 4. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. If you think you are saved by your works, you're making God your debtor. Mm -hmm. Because whenever we work, whatever we're paid is our wages. Are you reading my notes again? (laughs) God owes us nothing. Nope. Mm -mm. He owes us nothing. A worker earns wages, which are a debt of the owner. There it is. Uh, Yeah, that's exactly what you just said. There it is. It's, uh, I read that and was, it, it, I mean, that Boom. hammered home. Boom. It absolutely hammered home. Yep. And see, I, I've heard that before. I haven't really necessarily heard this completely preached on, but I've heard that part of it mm-hmm. talked about before. And I was like, whoa. Never thought about that. God's not my boss. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Mm mm. So, yeah. No, it's it's by our and, faith. And, and I mean, we do, <laughs> I'm going to throw this out there sure. just to put a wrinkle in it. We do, quote unquote, work for God. Sure. Because while we're not trying to be justified by our deeds, you want to do good mm-hmm. deeds because you want to please God. That's right. And in return, you're getting righteousness. It's, because it's, be, it's, it's displaying your righteousness. You're, you're, Yes, I mean you're not like it's not a one for one trade off. No. I my point to that is is, you know, you're you're doing good deeds, you're doing godly deeds so that God gets the praise and the glory. Yes, yes. But yes. you are getting something or you've already received something, yes. but there is something to benefit from well, that. Well, it's kind of like we talked about a previous video. We do good works and we give not to get mm-hmm. because of what we've got. Yeah. What God's done for us. Um, and you know, I was thinking about this the other day when I was driving around. I was I wasn't necessarily going over this chapter. Uh, I guess that was part of because I was thinking about that verse. But I was sitting there thinking about okay, works, works. Why do we do good works? And you know, I came across it's like look, our faith saves us. Our faith is how mm-hmm. we're accounted righteousness. The works that we do is the fruit of that of that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the outward expression. Mm-hmm. Of I'm a Christian because of how I live in my life, the works mm-hmm. that I do. It, it's it's the outward expression. You know, people should be able to see us coming. And I know this is exaggerated, but you know, a mile away, be like, oh, there comes a Christian right there. That's a man of God. You well, know. but I but, it goes back to how we end every video. List, you know, to let, let, our, let us live, live and die, so that it, when we're thought of, it's Christ that is remembered. That's exactly right. It goes right straight that, back that's, to that. So, so yeah, do, doing works is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, works is not necessarily, I don't know, we may have touched on this too in another video. Works is not necessarily, okay, I went down to the homeless shelter and fed people. I went yeah. down, you know, it's not physically all just working. It's your life. Mm-hmm. Doing good works is just... You know, doing good deeds, being a good person, being a loving person. Random acts of kindness. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Um, so, but yes, though, you know, we, we, it's because of our faith that we are accounted righteous. Yeah. So good. So good. So, and then, you know, I, but to him who does not work, but believes, boom, your faith is accounted for righteousness. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's right there. It, it, he illustrates it again by talking, you know, by quoting David. And this right here, I, I just circled up at this is us. <clears throat> Blessed are those whose lawless mm-hmm. deeds are forgiven. That's us. Lawless deeds are sin, and believers' sins are forgiven and covered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's totally us. Yeah, that's... In a nutshell. You know, and, and so, man. I just, I mean, I, you know, I marked, I think, righteousness in those first six verses uh, three, four times, three or four, I think it's three, three or four times. And then, you know, blessedness, blessed is in there three or four times. And I link the two together. To me, it's basically one and the same word. Because to me, I've, through my faith, I've got God's righteousness, mm-hmm. and that is a blessing. 
Sure enough. It is an absolute yes. blessing. I agree with that, 100%, yes. And so no matter what's going on in my life on a daily basis, I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wake up, I'm blessed. I, it, I mean, I just, to me, I think it's... It's kind of, it's just a simple little thing that, you know, we have to remind ourselves of. This is one of my, I'm going to call it a Christian pet peeve. Okay. It kind of goes along like we talked about miracles and stuff mm -hmm. in another video. Everybody's looking for the big one. So they're looking for the big blessing. God, where's my million dollar check showing up uh -huh. in my mailbox? You know, where's my house that's just paid for? You know, you know, they look for the big blessings. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that every morning that you open your eyes is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Every morning. When, if you wake up, it's by the grace of God. He's the one that puts breath in our lungs. Yep. So it's by His grace that we wake up. So, you know, right there, some, how are you doing? Well, I'm blessed more than I deserve. Mm -hmm. I'm here again another day. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yes, to your point there, <clears throat> because of my faith, we get God's righteousness. That's another blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's it's just the little blessings are overlooked well, so and I, and, much. Well, and I think it's like you talked about the big blessings that people are looking for. The other issue that I have with is they're looking for the most of those are worldly blessings. Yes, yes. Well, they, and and, and yes. it's just our it's our human it's our earthly human, nature. It's our human is that nature. we're looking for the blessings here on earth while we're here. Yes. I, I, guilty. No, and believe yeah. believe you me, guilty is charged. Um, because it's well, I, that's good. That means you're human. Yes. It, well, it's hard to imagine. I, for me, it's hard to imagine. You know that I'm the blessings that I'm storing up for myself in heaven. Um. If I have a blessing of a paid-for house, I know what that looks like. I've seen houses. I know what to be paid-for house looks like. Right. The blessings I'm storing up for myself in heaven for eternity, I can't necessarily like see. Like I don't know what that looks like, and so it's hard to wrap your mind around that sure. and, and fixate and imagine that. It's hard to be excited for something you're going to get. But, you don't know what you're going to get. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> but but, but side, we have to be. The flip side, we all were excited as kids for Christmas. Uh -huh. Didn't know what we was going to get, but we knew we was getting something. Mm -hmm. That's the way we should be thinking about our blessings in heaven. Absolutely. We don't know what we're going to get, but we know we're going to get something. And it's from God, so we know it's going to be good. Yeah. That's a great point. Yes. That's good. All right. Let's jump on down to verse 9 here because th this this... This section right here just totally backs up chapter 3. Does the blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness, righteousness might be imputed to them also, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which Abraham, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. So that completely blows the Pharisees' argument out of the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of your religious leaders. I, I shouldn't say Pharisees because it may have been different. It could have been the Sadducees. I don't know that for sure. But... You know, Paul just goes on to prove that circumcision is not required for salvation. Abraham wasn't even circumcised when God accounted him for righteousness because of his faith. Yep. He became circumcised as a sign. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean we all have to run out and get circumcised if we're not as a sign of it? No, I don't think it does. To, and, and well, and I, when I read that and thought about it, as you know, today I was I was sitting there and I was like, okay. Because right there, that you know, it's saying he he received the the righteousness because of his faith while he was uncircumcised, which leads us, the Gentiles, to know that okay, that happened with him. 
So that, you know, that fathered us in. We can do that. Yep. And then I believe that he received the seal of the circumcision because I believe it says in here that it's so that he also could be the leader of the Jews as well. Yeah. So he yeah. could he could lead both groups he because he had done it both yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, because it does it says that right there. He could be the father of the circumcised mm-hmm. and of those who just walk in the steps of his faith. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I think to me it was kind of just you know, God Covered using up. utilizing him that way so that he could yeah. you know lead everyone. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to check my notes. I'd already already. <laughs> Covered my notes. All right. Good, yeah. Good yeah. deal. Well then. I know why I take my notes. Evidently, I knew what I was going to say already. Um, but yeah, you know, in Paul, Paul had pretty much already told us that righteousness was for the circumcised and uncircumcised. But you know, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse here. I've said this a hundred times. But now he's using Abraham. Here, look, look. Mm-hmm. You all know who Abraham is, right? I mean, he, he's he's the old man. Yeah. And yeah, I, I went because it references uh, Genesis seventeen twenty four. Um, is a reference because I I wanted to look up at what age Abraham was when he got circumcised. He was over a hundred. He was ninety nine. Okay. Um, That's right. He was, he was 100. When which he, is when which he is in Genesis 17, 24. Um, but yeah, it was just it just blew me, you know, because I don't. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it was like you know his his faith, uh, you know, he didn't have unwavering faith, even though God's like, hey, these things are going to happen, you know. But he's like, uh, I'm you know 99 years old, like I'm an old guy. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, back in Abraham's time. I don't think 99 was necessarily very old, but because they lived quite a while back then. They lived but, a long time. Um, Boy, then they were living like up in 900 years old. Yeah. I, I don't remember how Abraham, old Abraham was when he died. I had to go back and look. But I'm sure they were probably, you know, still having kids and doing things much sooner than um, mm-hmm. the 99 and that kind of... Anyway. Mm-hmm. So, right there. Uh, circumcision is not a requirement for salvation. Now, I, I don't know how many people still believe that today. I'm sure there's some people out there that do, but mm-hmm. no. If you're uncircumcised, you can still be faith, have righteousness, you can still have salvation. It's still there for you. Yep. Just have the belief. That's it. Got to be a believer. Faith in God's grace. All right. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For those who are of the law are heirs. Faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, this is the good part. Oh yeah, we're good. Yep. He did not consider his own body, already dead since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Praise Jesus. And being fully convinced that what he, God, had promised, he, God, was also able to perform. (laughs) Thank you, And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us, 
it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Oh, my. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. 13 through 25 is just pow. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, so just, just to start it off, you know, look, you know, if we are righteous because of the law, then faith is pointless. Mm -hmm. Faith is pointless. Now, to see the contrary, if you get righteousness by faith, the law is not pointless. The law still has a place. We establish the law. We mm -hmm. uphold the law. The law is an all just sin. Yep. But if you get righteousness through the law, faith is pointless completely. Yeah. Well, it's like we talked about last week. You know, if if you're if if you can. If the law is all you need, then you can do it all yourself with exactly. your deeds. Exactly. And and so yes, like you just said, the faith, exactly. the faith then becomes it becomes pointless, like you said. I like that he you know iterated in fifteen, you know that the law brings about wrath for where there is no law, there are no transgressions. Just you know reiterating the fact that what you talked about, the law is knowledge of sin. You yeah. have to have it still. So that's that, how you know you're so doing that wrong. You know, yeah. You don't know the rules. How can you break them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can't you know, play the game if you don't know the rules. You know, and worldly matters, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But mm -hmm. evidently, I mean, not that way here. But yeah, because if there, you know, where there is no law, there is no transgression. So if you are in a lawless society, nobody's breaking the law. Yeah, and then, I just you know, and it starts in thirteen also. Uh, one, two, three, I think at least four times, you know, promise. Uh -huh. Promise shows up. Because I'm sitting there, I see it, and I'm like, okay, well, what, you know, what are we talking about? What, you know, what are we promising here? There's a promise in 16, you know, so that the promise might be sure to all of the seed. In 20, he did not waver at the promise of God. I'm like, okay, and then we get over to 21, and it's, and being fully convinced that what God had promised God was also able to perform. And so then I start doing I start doing a little more digging. <laughs> and I start doing a little more digging. Because you know and it, it comes it comes back to me like I have written down you know give God glory and praise for all always sticking to his promise and draw strength through faith that he God can do anything that he says he can. That's right. And so there are, right. there are two other scriptures that are referenced in, in my Bible that I want to read right quick just because they proved this, they just hammer this point home a little bit more. Okay. First one is uh, Luke 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Yep. Yep. Um, and then we're going to go to Hebrews eleven nineteen, which it's really, I'm going to read, it's really. Um, Ver, chapter 11, verse 19, but I'm going to read 17 through 19. Um, so seven, starting with 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called. And verse 19, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So just other, you know, having the faith in God that he's going to do what he promises he's going to do. Standing on the promises. Yeah. Yes. And the beauty of this whole entire thing is, is that he doesn't ever change. No. Day one to day infinity. Whatever he says he's going to do, he's going to do. It's, I just, I love it. And I love that he... Uh, back in chapter 4 of Romans verse 19 and not being weak in faith uh, he did not consider his own body already dead and uh, the deadness of Sarah's womb verse 20 he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God faith in God and that his promises and that he's going to maintain and uphold his promises you can gather strength from that Hey, stand on God's promises when doubt comes to mind. Remember, Abraham, okay? 
this is a continuous process of building this faith. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it starts with having the faith of Abraham, walking in that faith, standing on God's promises, just mm-hmm. like Abraham did. I mean, it, when it's talking about him and Sarah, Abraham was 99 years old. Sarah wasn't far behind. I don't remember her age. But anyway, but her womb was barren. She was not able to have children. Mm-hmm. And God told Abraham, you will have a child. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the one. They took it in their own hands. And Sarah gave him one of the maids, concubines, whatever. I don't remember what they called him. I think it was concubine. But, and mm-hmm. he had a child with the maid. But that wasn't the heir. That wasn't the seed God nope. was talking about. Yep. Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Mm-hmm. He's 99 years old. His body is already dead. Right. Her womb is barren. And God said, you're going to have a son. He never wavered. He never said, now the contrary, this is a whole different study, but I'm going to throw this in. The father of John, John the Baptist, was in the same situation as Abraham. When the angel of the Lord came to him and said, you're going to have a son. How is this possible? Mm -hmm. There is no way this is possible. I know it's just not possible. God closed his mouth. The man could not speak until she gave birth to John. She became pregnant, and for nine months, the man couldn't speak. (laughs) She probably enjoyed those nine months. (laughs) But so that's us. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of people we are. That's the way we are. Yeah. You know, I'm sure, I I can't remember, was it it Zachariah? Was Zachariah his name? I can't remember his name now to save my life. Um, but I'm sure he had faith, mm-hmm. but his faith wasn't near as strong as Abraham's was. Mm-hmm. So we are like him, and we want to get to like Abraham, to where nothing makes our faith waver. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. God said it. It's going to happen. And that's what we just have to stand on those promises. Um, so we have to have that faith like Abraham did. Uh, now, I do want to reiterate. John the Baptist's father didn't have faith like Abraham before John was born. I'm sure after all this happened, he had yeah. just as much faith Abraham did. But I believe he was a kind to him for righteousness through his faith. Just like Abraham. I believe that they both made it to heaven. But, so when, when it says, you know, we want to have unwavering faith, that just helps us mm-hmm. it's when doubt comes in. That helps us when we're going through something, is to be able to have the unwavering faith of Abraham to stand on God's promises. Mm-hmm. That's where the peace beyond all understanding comes from. Yep. And so, yeah, well, so I, I, mean, I just, I don't want nobody to think, oh my gosh, I have to be just like Abraham to be accounted righteousness. You know, you don't have to have unwavering faith to no. be accounted for righteousness. No, you're counted to righteousness. And perhaps salvation. For righteousness through your, through yes. your faith. Yes. And you believe in the gospel of Jesus mm-hmm. and you are accounted for righteousness right Absolutely. There. Yep. But the goal... The goal is to is continuously to, is, build. That's the whole goal of why we're doing this is yes, to yes. to know Christ more and to go for... You know, it's just to, to dive into this thing and... To strengthen And just faith. strengthen to ourselves. Build, to strengthen build, our yeah. faith and... I want to be Abraham. Whenever somebody is up there at my memorial service talking about me, one of the things I once said is, he reminded me a lot of Abraham. Don't know if I'll ever accomplish it, but that's my goal. Yeah. Got to have goals. Got to have goals. Absolutely got to have goals. Oh, yes. I did have one more note. I forgot. I put it here. I also had it in my Bible. We need to remember that when God says something's going to happen, He can do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, even, and this kind of goes back to our discussion, I think it was in the last video, we were talking about, you know, we're supposed to be out making disciples. Well, I'm not good enough, not smart enough, I don't know enough, you know, whatever. No. If God tells you to go make disciples of people, it can happen. 
Mm-hmm. Now, you know, it, 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 God can make it do make it happen. He can do it. And that's... Well, and, and you know, you, you hear this. I've heard this phrase quite a bit. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before, too. It's God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. He equips the called. Amen. So... And and it's just what we've talked about another and we've talked about it today. It's it's you know, it's unbelief. It's it's you know, Satan coming into your thoughts and telling you you're not good enough. Nobody's gonna listen to you, you don't know what you're talking about, you've only been studying the Bible for three days, you can't do this. If God's calling you to do this, he will equip you as you're doing it to to do it. Well, whenever that that was my problem when the last church I was in, where I actually taught Sunday school, when the pastor asked me to do it, mm-hmm. my my response, heck yeah, that'd be cool. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Three weeks go by, and I wasn't ready. And he came up to me at church and he goes, "All right, next Sunday you're up." Wait, huh? What? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're up next Sunday. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I, I went through that. I don't know enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, am I a lot, am I a lot more knowledgeable in the Bible now than I was, you know, four years ago? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But I still didn't feel knowledgeable to be teaching anything. Don't call me a teacher. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything to teach you. Let me teach you how to fish. Come on, I can do that. But I can't teach you about the Word of God. That's what we're doing. We're being fishers of men. Exactly. Well, you're right. And so what I learned through that process was I'd be like, all right, I'd have my topic, mm-hmm. and I would study it. I'd go through the Bible. I would make my notes and put everything together the way I wanted. I wasn't necessarily teaching what I knew. I was passing on what I just learned. Yep. I was being equipped weekly. Mm-hmm for what I was going to do on that Sunday. Yep. I was I, so when God called me to do that, I was not equipped. Mm-mm. So he had to equip me weekly. And now some of those teachings, I could sit down and have a conversation with you about them and I could now share with you what I know. Mm-hmm. Instead of what I just learned. Well, I mean, I got a couple of points on that and so it's, you know, a lot of, I think, a whole bunch of, of people, going back to your, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm ready, we're never ready because it's we want to feel like we're a thousand percent know what we're about to go say and we have every question covered that's going to come at us and this and that, you know, you hear people say it all the time, oh, you know, we're going to wait and have kids when we're ready. <laughs> you ain't never gonna be ready. You, you just do it. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm yeah. not. And I mean, there's something. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'm not buying a house. I mean, okay, you can sure. lay that out a little sure. bit more, maybe. But I mean, my point is, is that you're never for the way you build up ready in our mind. We're never ready. No, no. Well, you're, you're not gonna get. You'll you'll keep finding a way to put it sure. off and put it off and put sure. it off. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Well, I'm that's not there yet. Hmm. Um, Fear, doubt, and unbelief. And just to piggyback on that, in like in my particular situation, I could have held a class on how to build an engine. I could have held a class on how to fish. Mm-hmm. Because those are things I have many, many years experience with, mm-hmm. and I know them now. So hopefully in another 10 or 15 years, then sure, I would feel equipped. I would feel ready mm-hmm. to do what we're doing now. I don't feel ready to do this. The only, the only reason I have the confidence in what I'm doing here is I've done this before. Different platform, but it's the same thing. I am sharing to people what I just learned. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff I already knew because maybe I've studied it before or maybe I've read it before. It's familiar to me, but, that, that's, but I still, I'm still learning out of it. I'm still growing, and I'm just sharing that information. So I am being equipped weekly still mm-hmm. for what I've been called to do. So yes, you know, in my mind, I don't feel ready to do this. Oh no, I'm no. I'm fighting imposter syndrome every week. We're doing this right now. So yes, I mean, it's, I mean, so it just it's just the nature of it. It's it's yeah. it's the it's the Satan talking unbelief and fear into your mind. Satan into my mind. All liars. Fear comes from Satan. Doesn't okay. come from God. But once again, I stepped into that arena the first time. I stepped into it this time because I know 
when God says to do it, He can make it happen. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I've done a couple of different things in the last few years or whatever, and I this hit me one day. It was like, all right, and that's whenever I, you know, contacted you and be like, hey, this has been put on my heart, you know, about doing this, and I, I've been the strongest with this particular thing we're doing now about beating down the fear and, you know, you know, whatever potential naysayers, you know, just all of that stuff. Like, it's been, I've had an easier time with those things um, with this channel that we're doing than some of the other stuff I've done in the past. Not saying that it's because of it's this topic or that topic, or I just think that it's, I'm probably a little farther along. Yep, it's growth. Um, it being this topic, it keeps me in this, and so I'm getting, um, I'm staying connected yep. Yep. Um, with God and, and with the Holy Spirit, and so I yep. think it's, you know, it's strengthening me that way mm -hmm. um, and strengthening my faith in, you've asked me to do this, I'm going to do it, and you use it and put it in front of people for your glory, um, and, you know, we're just a medium. You know, it, it, it's kind of scary because th this puts you out there. This is not just you and I sitting here having a conversation yeah. behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're in the Christ Be Known studio. We're yeah. behind a closed door. We are. But we're putting it out to the world. Yep. Come join us. Um, so, I mean, it, it is a little fearful. Mm-hmm. Because you know you're going to get naysayers. Oh, yeah. You know you're going to get people be like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. No, that is not what that said. That is not true. That, you know, it's going to happen. But, hey, man, I'm just a farmer planting seeds. Mm hmm Oh, I like that. I'm just nice. a farmer planting seeds. Nice. That's all I'm doing. I know God will bring the rain, mm -hmm. and God will send workers in the field for the harvest. You know, the really cool thing, and I, we're, I'm getting a little off topic here, and we're starting to ramble, but you got the seed planter, the seed waterer, and the harvester. And we will be all three of those. Very rarely, if ever, will you be all three of them at the same time. But like, like through doing this, somebody may see this, and it may plant a seed. Mm -hmm. Somebody else may see it that's had a seed planted, and it waters it. Yep. And there may be somebody else watching who's had it planted, had it watered, and this harvest it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you never know how you're going to be used for it, and I don't care. Nope. You know, I, I'm here to plant seeds. If I become the waterer and the harvester also, that's for God's glory. That's for God to do what he wants to do with it. I'm here to plant seeds. Mm -hmm. I'm just a farmer. Farmer on. And I guess yeah. I need to start wearing a straw hat and keep a piece of straw in my mouth chew on while we're sitting here and get a pair of overalls. Yes. Check out next week's video and see if that happens or not. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. He's not ready. No. <laughs> well, no, not ready to be a farmer. So, you know, do you have any more points to touch nope. on? I mean, we, 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 uh, we've hammered we, it pretty good. Uh, to just a quick wrap up, you know, it's this is Paul presenting his evidence you know if he was like in a court of trial and he was a prosecutor or a defense attorney he's gone through the first three chapters so far laying out the facts and now he's submitting the evidence yep man once again we're saved by our faith it's God's grace our faith through God's grace it's by God's grace through our faith all one of these days I'll learn to say that right it's by God's grace through our faith that we are saved, that we are accounted for righteousness, mm -hmm. has nothing to do with circumcision. It's circumcision of the heart. It's an internal circumcision. Yep. I know I'm, I'm actually wrapping up the whole first book chapter. Hey. Uh, so it proves with Abraham. Abraham was not circumcised when it was accounted to him of righteousness by his faith. Yep. Um, he was circumcised so he could be the father of both the circumcised and those who walk in his faith. Mm-hmm. You know, um, his faith never wavered. He he was rock solid. Um, you know, could you imagine? In our day today, we don't live to be 150, 200 years old. But if somebody was 70 years old, 
never had any kids, wife couldn't have kids, and they told her buddy, hey, God told me I'm going to have a child. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. I'm sure, I, I had to say oh, the he, same thing for Abraham naysayer, back then. Naysayers yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham's crazy. You hear him talking about mm-hmm. having a kid? Dude's 100 years old. You kidding me? Get out of here. Him yep. saying I had no kid. Bam. Here comes Isaac. Yep. You know, so thank goodness he didn't have Facebook. He really would have put up with a bunch of it back yeah. then, but. I like, uh, the, you know, verse 4 r- really drives home the fact that it's not works. Yes. You know, he's hammered it in the first three chapters. You know, it's not your works, it's your faith. It's not your work. Th- this analogy that's in verse 4, it's, uh, it's, it's it amazing. just absolutely Read, read it again. It. We need to read it again. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Don't make God a debtor. He doesn't owe us anything. Absolutely not. Amen. He does what he does because he's a loving God. He is a merciful God and he's Mm -hmm. full of grace. He owes us nothing. Nope. And when we try to say, well, I did this, so God owes me a blessing. No, God does not owe you anything. You just made God a debtor. You made him your boss. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't want to work for my father. I want him to be my father, not my boss. I want to do my works for father without expecting anything in return. Yep. I've already gotten everything I need for all the works that I'm going to do. That is 100% it. It was uh, was all paid up front. That's right. Paid in full long before I was born. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, well, we hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Please share your thoughts, comments, questions down below. Um, if if you got something out of it that we didn't touch on, share it. Yeah. You know, comment on it down there. You know, it help us out. We're all here to learn, here to grow better. We're not doing this because we think we know it all. We know more than anybody else. So. You know, we're trying to create a community here of believers that want to get together and know Christ more so we can grow, know, grow, and go. go. That's our church tagline that we like to <laughs> um, So, you know, if you like what we're doing, if you're interested in this and you want to come around, man, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, share it, hit that notification bell so you get your... Notification, we put a new video out every Thursday. New, I mean, every Tuesday, new videos come out. Um, so, with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that, as we always like to say, is our reminder to ourselves. Um, throughout this life, let us uh, live and die in a way that when we are dead and we are thought of, it is Christ that is remembered. Amen. Christ be known. Amen. Let us pray before we go. Let's go. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for your word and mm-hmm. for your grace and yes, your mercies. Lord. Yes, Lord. We just thank you for your promise, God, and that you stand on your promise yes. no matter what. If you say yes, you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If oh, you say you Lord. can do it, you can do Praise it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we just put all of our faith in you, and we are just so blessed. Thank um, you, Jesus. To be um, covered by your righteousness, Father. Mm-hmm. We thank you for everyone that's um, being touched by this video, watching it, thank listening you. to it. We thank you for us that we're yes, being Lord. touched by this learning. Um, thank you for opening our eyes to see your words and our minds to understand your words, Father. Hallelujah. Open our hearts to receive your Holy Spirit and that we may write your word on our heart. Amen. Father, we just thank you, and it's in your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you all next week. See you all next week. Thanks for watching.